I was diagnosed with COVID-19. Here's how I'm doing today. It's easy to say that today, on October 5th, 2020, I'm doing fine. Compared to the thousands upon thousands who have been infected and hospitalized with COVID-19, completely incapacitated by this deadly disease, yeah, I am doing fine. COVID-19 coronavirus has affected the entire world. Here in the U.S., 7.45 million people have been confirmed to have COVID-19. There have been 210,000 deaths here in the U.S. And here in my county, where I live in Fresno County, there have been 28,975 confirmed cases and 399 deaths. I think this number is far smaller than the actual number because there are so many people who have gone without even knowing that they had it in the first place. That was my story. I didn't even know I had it. And if it wasn't for my wife who contracted it and was t and had tested positive, I would have never have known. I would have never have gotten tested because one, I don't leave the house at all ever since um, I've been doing the AJ in the morning show from my home studios, I have not left at all, if not to the grocery store, and that's just real brief, and then back home. Face mask, covering, sanitizing, that's, that's, that, sanitizing was my regular way of life in the beginning anyway, but the face mask, I've, I have that thing on as soon as I leave the house. So I think the actual number of people with COVID-19 is far higher than what is actually being reported. Now I was tested, it was toward the beginning of July, and my wife, who works as a, a care worker for uh, an elderly uh, care facility, like a retirement type home, they were testing their workers on a regular basis. When her test came up positive, we quickly, very, very quickly, cleared out one of the bedrooms, quarantined it so that we wouldn't go anywhere near this bedroom, and there she stayed for two entire weeks. I would make meals and then leave it for her outside her door. We'd all clear the space. She would open the door, get her food. It was like a prison for her for two weeks. Thank goodness that she went the entire two weeks without having any symptoms, not coughing, never having a fever, never having any show of, of anything. As a precaution, the entire family had taken tests, our three kids and myself going to uh, the hospital to get checked out and they had tested negative. I tested negative. Throughout the, those two weeks of her quarantine, uh, further conversations with my doctor, they found it really weird that I would be negative while she was positive. So test again, AJ. So we all went, got tested. Kids tested negative. I tested positive. It was the second or third test. I think it was the third test. Tested positive. There were three tests. Two negatives for me, and the third was the positive. Every time they would ask me, are you, do you, are you showing any symptoms? No, I didn't have fever. I didn't have diarrhea, didn't have a cough, headache, body aches. I could hold my breath for 10 seconds. That was, I don't know if that was just a rumor, but I heard that if you could hold your breath for 10 seconds without having to cough, you were clear. I could do that. Uh, but the third test tested positive and I didn't find out about that positive testing till well after August. It was recorded. August 1st, 2020, that I had tested positive, but I didn't find out till after that date. The doctor had called me and told me about me being positive for COVID-19. Have you been around anybody? Yeah, well, my kids and my wife. Well, have, have you shown any symptoms? No. Have they? No. Okay, well, I guess you're all clear. That's how I found out that I was all clear. Oh, okay, I guess while well, you're all clear, it's been more than two weeks since the test results came in and, and you haven't shown any symptoms. So I'm marking it that you have successfully um, recovered from COVID-19. Okay, thanks, doc. Let me know if your symptoms change at all, but that was it. That, was, that wasn't even my regular doctor. That was just a doctor that had called me. I didn't get a call from the county health department till mid-August. All of the, the regular procedures that I had heard would happen didn't actually happen till well after I had recovered from COVID-19. But all throughout the entire process, I didn't feel like I had the virus in the first place because I really didn't show any of those symptoms. Having been told that I had recovered from COVID-19, well, 
there was no reason why I couldn't donate my plasma if I did, in fact, have COVID-19 and successfully recover from COVID-19. There is something in my blood that can help other patients. So I went and made an appointment and donated that convalescent um, plasma for to help other patients. Now, today, I am still asymptomatic. That is true. But there are little things that I've noticed. This all could be just my brain playing tricks on me because if you're going to tell me that I'm sick and you're a doctor, I'm going to tend to take your word for it. <laughs> Even though I don't feel it, I'm just going to tend to take your word for it, right? Now, the little things that I've noticed, could they be related to COVID-19? I don't know. I wish I knew. I have very little confidence in the medical system taking my concerns as one of their top priorities. AJ Sanchez, you are a speck of sand on the great beach of the world. I don't think you matter. <laughs> That's how I truly feel. But maybe it does matter. But maybe they'll matter to you. If you were diagnosed with COVID-19 and you have successfully recovered from it, have you noticed these little things? Have you noticed any kind of little things that have been a little different? One of them for me is I find myself clearing my throat a whole lot more. I find like there's like a little something deep down that I have to clear out. <clears throat> I sound hoarse. I feel like it's taking a beating on my, my vocal cords. I'm taking more breaths in my talk breaks than usual. This, I don't know if you would notice, I talk for a living, so I know how much I can say in a breath. And I feel like I'm taking more breaths in between each thought. And normally I can complete a thought within a, a, a single breath. But now I'm finding that I'm taking more and more pauses to breathe. Again, this all could just be me, but maybe they're related. Oh, and one more thing. You know that feeling when you first wake up and if you're waking up really, really early, that that's the sleepiness, the, the grogginess. I, I don't know what the word is, but it's just that kind of sluggish feeling. That's the case of the sleepies. I feel that. And that is really hard to kick. I know. Morning show DJ. How do you do it? Coffee. Ah. Honestly, if it wasn't for us talking each morning, it would be really hard to get out of bed and go in each morning. It really would. You are my motivation to get going each day. But like I said, if you've recovered from COVID-19, do any of my little symptoms, does that sound familiar? Have you noticed any kind of little changes? Are they great big changes that call for me calling in the doctor and having them uh, look at me? Not, not really. And I'll tell you why. Back in 2019, it was around March, springtime, going into summer. I came down with the worst fever, cough, um, my lungs hurt. I didn't have enough air and oxygen within me, it felt like, to even stand for any kind of period of time. I couldn't even walk to like the bathroom without feeling like I didn't have enough oxygen in my body and I was going to faint. I was clearing my throat all kinds because there was all kinds of crap that I felt like in my chest. This was 2019. This was end of spring, beginning of summer of 2019. I went to the doctor, couldn't see my regular doctor, so I had to go to the urgent care and they diagnosed me with having a hundred day cough. I've never heard of this in my entire life. A hundred day cough that was brought on by seasonal asthma. Never in my life had I ever had asthma. I had felt before that appointment, before that diagnosis, I had felt like I couldn't breathe. Again, like that feeling of I just don't have enough oxygen inside my body. It was gradually getting worse up until that point. And I told my doctor about it before that urgent care appointment, 100-day cough diagnosis. I had told my doctor, doctors, because I had gone through several of them before that about my not able to breathe. They put the little thing on my finger and tested my blood oxygen level. And no, oh, it's fine. You're, you're good. You don't have asthma. Hmm, that's weird. Let's send you for a blood test. Let's send you for another blood test. We're going to send you off to get a uh, ultrasound. We're going to send you here. They were thinking it was everything but asthma, a thyroid problem, liver enzyme problem, uh, an anxiety disorder, several tests 
were being done. I had run out of money. I was already in collections for the test. So at this point, when they were unsure and they wanted more tests to be done so that they could be a little more sure, I was beginning to believe the anxiety disorder diagnosis. Can't breathe. Anxiety disorder. Maybe you're right. I, I told him I can't breathe and therefore I feel anxious about it. I'm not anxious and therefore I can't breathe. So you've got that all twisted. I I went to this one doctor that was so bad. They had me take all kinds of different blood tests and then they sent me to a doctor who specialized in analyzing the blood and seeing what's wrong with whatever kind of enzymes and, and what have you. This doctor pulled out a tape recorder. And this is what struck me as be indifferent because I am an audio specialist. I get into the appointment. I go into the doctor's office and it's not a regular type of doctor's office. It's a blood specialist, but um, he opens the door, comes in, places the tape recorder down on the desk beside me. Okay. It's such and such date. He's, he opens up the, the appointment with, okay, it's such and such date and this such and such time. And the patient is AJ Sanchez, who is being seen for blah, 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 blah. Can you tell me in your own words, how you're feeling? Well, I'm here because I'm trying to find out why I can't breathe. And I feel like I just don't have enough oxygen within my lungs. And it, it feels like I'm going to faint, like I'm going to die. It, that's how bad it felt that it got me to, to go to the doctor and that many blood uh, samples. And, and so that doctor says, okay, I'm going to tell you what's wrong. It's not, it's not your liver. It's not your thyroid. It's not blah, 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 not blah, blah, blah. Anything that you had thought or were told, it's not any of that. What you have is an anxiety disorder. I'm going to prescribe you some uh, Xanax and you're going to uh, take it and feel so good. You're going to be able to look at the pill bottle and that will oftentimes make you feel like you're good and you can breathe. I said, doctor, this isn't a psychological thing. Like I literally feel like I look, you have a control issue just by you interrupting me right there you have a control issue. I know for a fact you need Xanax. Here's the prescription and chalked it up to that and walked out. That was my end charged me a grip. I, after that appointment, I was like, you know what? I'm not going to pay that. Yeah. Right. Took me to collections. That doctor paid it off, whatever. So after not having any diagnoses, diagnoses after that, I chalked it up to anxiety disorder. Then came the hundred day cough. Then came that one doctor who says, oh, that was brought on by asthma. Is it true? Is it really asthma? Could it have been true all this entire time? Could it have been avoided had you have prescribed me the two inhalers that I am now taking every single day, the antibiotics to take away the whatever kind of infection I had in my lungs, could it have been all avoided? I have no idea. Or was this a beginning onset of COVID-19 before the pandemic really began? Was this something that was already starting, was already in the air? I don't know. And I don't have that much confidence that, again, that was placed on my the importance of how I'm feeling. So I don't know. If you feel like me, I hope this offers some sort of solace. I hope this makes you feel like you're not alone because I honestly, I, I do feel like I'm alone in a lot of these feelings. Thank God my wife who has tested negative. Now she got an actual test that told her you have been cleared of COVID-19. I'm going off my doctor's word. Um, thank goodness she has not had any symptoms aside from a weird side effect from the flu shot that we just got. That's the only thing that's been unusual. So again, thank God she's good. My kids are good. I'm good for the most part. The little things though have been, you know, on my mind, but are they related? Please let me know how you're doing. How are you doing? I hope you're doing well. I want to do something that's completely out of the normal scope and could be deemed unprofessional. But I feel like it's necessary at this time. Like, I really feel like we, 
I should have done this a long time ago. I want to ask that you'd pray with me. Holy Father, come to you asking for your peace, asking for your healing, asking for comfort. There's a lot going on with COVID-19. There's a lot going on with health concerns and not a whole lot to be offered when it comes to answers. A solid list of symptoms to look out for. A solid way out. Holy Father, I know a lot of people who have passed away from this deadly disease. I know a lot of people who have lost their loved ones because of this disease. And I ask for peace to come upon each one of them and feel your presence at this very moment. For those who are diagnosed with COVID-19 and who are in fact feeling the symptoms, feeling their bodies telling them that something is not normal. Holy Lord, be with them, be with their doctors, and let them find a clear diagnosis, a clear way to treat them so that they can get back to their lives to brighten the world around them. For those people who are like me, who went on with having the coronavirus that we're hearing in the news and not even knowing it, I pray that we have the strength to go and donate blood or plasma or whatever is needed, whatever is in our power to donate, if it helps somebody else get through it quicker. Please be with everybody. Be with all your children. Giving us encouragement to be there for one another. Thank you, Father, for hearing my words and our words and our hearts. It's in your Holy Son, Jesus' name, that I pray. Amen. Thank you.